That's Melissa. Melissa had a hard job. It was competitive, she was on call seven days a week, and she always had to be on. But then she got this radical idea to make all that stress go away. She quit. Melissa lives and breathes sawdust. But well, I, I guess she doesn't actually breathe it on purpose. But anyway, Melissa and husband Greg own Durham Custom Wood Decor in Oshawa, a company that makes signs, trays, tables out of wood from scratch. But it wasn't long ago when Melissa was working full time for the man. Real estate is a little bit different than a full-time job, so it's a lot of hours and you're kind of at everybody's beck and call. And then you have your clients. If your clients want to see a house, um, they want to see it like now and you got to go. Melissa had three kids, young kids, and she had to constantly find last minute childcare whenever she had to work. Sometimes you have offers come in in the night and you have to run to the office at nine o'clock at night. Eventually, that got to be just too much. Oh yeah, Greg and I actually, we kind of had a moment outside on our back deck at our old house where we were kind of like, if we're gonna do this, we need to, we need to go all in and do it, otherwise it's never going to work. You were fed up with working a job, so what did you do? I quit my job. How did you get the idea of making wood things? Kind of random. Greg will probably tell you a different story than I will, but <laughs> um, for the most part, it came from his mother. She asked us to make her a sign for Christmas one year. So we made it and it was terrible. It was awful. It was hand painted. It was kind of just thrown together, but she loved it. And it turned into her friends calling and saying, hey, can they make me a sign like that? I really, I really want a sign like that. So you made a terrible sign and, and that spawned your business? I did, pretty much. So my question is, where do all these sayings come from? Do you come up with these? Uh, we come up with some of them, but for the most part, they come from customers. So customers will send us an email with the wording that they want. And then some of them are just so great that we kind of reproduce them and people just order them over and over and over again. It costs money to start a business. How did you get the money? The good thing about this business is there isn't a huge startup. So a lot of the wood that we were using right off the bat, we were getting for free. But if we saw stuff at the side of the road that people were giving away, we would just throw it in the truck, bring it home and work with what we had. In the past three years, Melissa and Greg have upgraded their business space three times. Their first location was their house and you can just imagine how the neighbors felt about living next to this. It was a disaster at times. I mean, especially when it was rain, we, did, we didn't have a lot of cover. We ended up going out one day and buying canopies and thinking maybe that would work. And I think they blew away like the next day. What makes for a good piece of wood? A good piece of wood. We like stuff that has lots of knots in it and knotty pine and uh, not too warped because if it's warped obviously it's not going to work out too well so something like this one here so a board like that we like because of the knots yeah it's a knot oh yeah the yeah more, and the when more you put, knots, you the put more stain character. or something on this it really pops exactly yeah yep. pops yeah so most people love the knots you get this kind of people that don't really like the knots but yeah, i like we it love much them. better yeah so and then you will cut all that stuff yourself you you literally do all, all the, the cutting, all the cutting. The work yeah. He'll cut it the exact same day, and usually he doesn't come home until it's done. Yeah. Because he's not allowed to. <laughs> <laughs> so the uh, the lumberyard guys must love you. Hey, yeah, they say enough of me. Usually I bring them some coffees or give them a little tip every once in a they while. They should be bringing sure. you coffee. <laughs> yeah, you right? think, yeah. <laughs> no, but it keeps everybody smiling, so that's a good thing. Greg also quit his job, and that has its own drama built in. He was working for his father in a union job. Dad was the foreman. Leaving wasn't easy. You didn't just have a job, but you had a job where you were working for your dad. Yeah, yeah, which is hard. <laughs> we had many arguments, but we always got through it. Mom got a lot of calls. Dad's being a mm, again. <laughs> but, you know, he had he he's the boss, so he can't take it easy. Especially if you know it's his son. Then if he takes it easy on you, and then he has to do it, you know. So, but he's a hardworking man and he doesn't expect anything less from anybody else. So, I love my dad. Uh, but now you get a chance to miss him. Yeah, I do. I am the luckiest guy in the world. I think so anyway. I got a great family, great job, great life. Happy as big in mud. <laughs>
<laughs> you guys are pretty fast at this kind of stuff. Yeah. And how many of these would you do in a typical day? Depends. During our slow season, I uh, have no idea what you're probably... saying. So, uh, I like many, when she wears many, a mask. How many would you do in a typical day, oh, Greg? Well, during the busy season, maybe, I don't know, 200. In a day? In a day. Yeah. I'll usually get some help, though. I'll get my brother or someone to come in. But yeah, we pump them out hard. Now, I notice that you wear that a lot, but you don't wear it a lot. So why? So you have pristine lungs, and yours looks like the bottom well, of a yeah. garage floor. <laughs> I think it's a man-woman sort of thing. Okay, oh. not touching that one. All right, so what do I do? So mark a centerpiece, grab your tape. Okay. So, half of 21 and a half, you know what that is? Um, <laughs> 10 and something. It took me about 25 minutes to make something Greg can create in about six. And of course, the quality of my work can be described succinctly as a... Oh, oh you okay. screwed in right. What happened? Your center's not center. But in the beginning, you couldn't do 100 in a day, right? No. So like, how fast did you get? What were you doing in a typical day in the very beginning? Beginning? Oh. I think 40 signs a week was probably no, more than what we started, could do. No, when we first started, we were about 10. Yeah, but when 10 we got... A, 10 a week? 10, 10 a week. And when we hit 20 a week, we went into full panic mode. Yeah, we like... couldn't keep up. The best part, and by best, I mean easiest, staining. So you're going to start with the, the, the edges on the circles. Yep. Okay. What's it like working with your wife? It's good. <laughs> no, I don't mind, it's great. I, I can never get sick of her. I love being around her all the time. It's just one of those things, you know, you find someone you love and you just can't get enough of them. That looks good, yeah. with the exception of the part that you ripped and stuck together. Uh, you know, I, I kind of like that part, you know? What you got? Do you want, are we revealing mine? Yeah. The, who's the Osmond That's family? Us. That would be us. Are you guys the yes. Osmond family? We used family? our own name on this one. We actually don't so have one of So you were established in 2009. Yeah. What were you before 2009? We were nothing. Just unestablished, yeah, I guess, right? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> what is the range in price of all these things? What's the cheapest Pricing? thing? So the cheapest thing, it would be around the $30 mark, and that would be for our standard family name sign. So it would be something of this style. So it's actually a pretty good size for $30. The Bosian family, you, you sell a lot of these ones? Not that specific one, no. Right. You have a product, yeah. you have a business. Mm -hmm. How do you get the word out so people will come and buy your stuff? Right off the bat, we made a few sample signs. So really similar to what we do now, maybe not as nice as what our stuff looks like now. Um, and I put it out on Facebook and I kind of just put a headline with it. If you had the opportunity to buy something like this, would you buy it? And from that point on, I had people commenting and saying, oh yeah, I'll take one, I'll take one, I'll take one. And we kind of just grew from there. Experts say social media marketing is worth it. Alicia Loreo is a business counselor from the Canadian Federation of Independent Business. She says using your social networks builds lifelong customers and it doesn't have to be pricey. Do people need to spend a lot of money on marketing these days in order to tell people what they're offering? Well, yes and no. I think that, you know, uh, social media platforms are in itself free, right? Uh, however, the cost of running social media campaign, think of pay-per-click ads and such, involves a cost. The good news though is that you can start small and as you're defining your communication, your value proposition, uh, and your audience, you're able to efficiently use your resources better and you're able to scale that budget, right? It's not like the old um, days where you needed to get radio ads and print ads and exactly. all that kind of stuff. You can do it yourself. You can do it yourself and it's it's a really great way to build your brand awareness, right? And to lead your customer to your website potentially to convert them into a paying customer. And on top of uh, offering products now, you mm -hmm. offer some services and workshops as we well. Do. Tell me about that. Yeah, so the workshops are pretty new and they went off great. Right from the bat, we had people interested. We were filling workshops once a week for bachelorette parties and for girls' nights, and it's been great for us. Or just go crazy, have fun. Working for yourself often okay. means long hours, okay. even when you're home, which oh, isn't yeah. always easy when you have yeah, kids who are, sure. you know, the, climbing the walls. But working for yourself is its own reward. If you could go back in time, what information or advice do you wish that you had before you launched your business? I would have quit my job 
immediately. I would have done this immediately. Sooner. Oh yeah. I wish we had, I wish we had have thought of this years ago. I wish we had have, because we probably would have been even further into it now than we are already. It sounds like you wish you'd done this maybe oh, years earlier. Years ago. Years ago. You just kind of have to make sure everything's okay, because you don't want your parents to stress out. You don't want your mom to stress out that things aren't going to be okay. So there's a little bit of you know, fear in that way. Are you shocked by how far you come and how yes. little time? Oh yeah, 100%. We talk about that all the time. Um, we get really excited because we see how much we've grown even within a year's time. So we get really excited for like this time next year, where are we gonna be and what, what could have happened by now? I hope it continues to happen because we just love it. And it's hard to balance, but... Can you have a drink? Can you have a drink yet? You can. Um, Daddy, can you get him a drink, please? <laughs> Daddy, get you a drink, okay? So as you can see, it's a, it can be a balance. That's Michelle. Michelle had a really hard job. It was competitive. She had... What's that? What did I say, Michelle? What the <laughs> I told you. Listen, from now on, you're Michelle. <laughs> yeah. Very cool.